Amen. Say, man, when you get it, please. He said, now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master in honor because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man, vowed, but he was a leper. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captain out of the hand of Israel, a little man. She waited on Naaman's wife. She said unto her mistress, Would to God that my Lord were the prophet that is in Samaria, for he will recover him of leprosy. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I pray that I want to say what you have me to say. I know I'm not sufficient of myself. And Lord, I know that my sufficiency comes from the Lord. And I pray that you would use me for your glory today. And everything that will be done, will be done to glorify you. Let the house say amen. In Jesus' name. I want to preach on this thought. With the God that my Lord just that there's a prophet in Samaria, he would go, he would recover him of leprosy. Oh yes. I want to ask yourself here today if you're thinking about preaching, why do you want to preach? Ask yourself that. It's a great call to be a preacher. It's a great call. The Bible said, "Blessed those feet who carry the gospel." We're not carrying a football, we're not carrying a torch, we're carrying the message of Jesus Christ. Paul said, me being a master builder, he said, there's no other foundation that can be laid besides Jesus Christ. Jesus also told these men that he chose, he said, beware when all men speak well of you. Somebody's got to run you down for what you preach. Amen? says something to the Corinth church. He said, us ministers, we know the terror of the Lord. Do you realize today that there is a day coming that time will be no more? That there will be a day that a preacher won't have no opportunity to preach. Time will be declared no more. And man will have to give an account for everything that's done in this body. Paul told the Galatian church, and he also tells the Corinth church, he said, all that is seen is temporal. He said, but all that is unseen is eternal. Come on. He tells Ezekiel, the prophet, he says, when you hear the sword, he said, you bear it. He said, but when you don't hear the sword, he said, I'll call your tongue to cleave to the roof of your mouth. He said, but when you hear the sword, he said, you tell the wicked. If they don't forsake their wicked ways, Amen. And the sins will be upon them. He said, but you also tell the righteous. If they turn from their righteous ways, then I'll remember their righteousness no more. He said, Ezekiel, the duty of a watchman is to sound the trumpet. He said, but now Ezekiel, he said, if you don't sound the trumpet, he said, the blood of the people will be upon your hands. He tells the prophet Jeremiah. He said, Jeremiah, he said, if you don't speak my word, he said, I'll confound you. He tells Isaiah, he said, I have people that have eyes, they see not. I have people that have ears, but they hear not. He tells every prophet the duty about sending the word. Then he tells every prophet if they don't speak that word. Jesus says, what I tell you in secret, you yell from the rooftop. He also tells them in Revelation. He said, if you add anything to this book, he said, uh, he said I had to pledge to your life. If you take anything out of this book, he said, then I'll take your name out, the Lamb's Book of Life. Do you understand that there's a pressure? Every preacher says, oh, I'm nervous. Oh, I'm scared. Where is the pressure coming from? I assure you it's not coming from God. The pressure's coming from the enemy. The pressure's coming from hell. And the pressure's coming from the flesh. And somebody's going to get mad at me. But the truth of the reality of it is, you've been given the, you've been given the greatest message of all. It's 
the gospel of Jesus. And though he didn't say so to Christopher go out to all the world and preach hell, hell is just something that comes with the consequences of not preaching. Can someone I'm telling somebody of true repentance? And repentance means to turn from or forsake your own life. Amen. This woman here, when God began to speak to me of a revelation of the New Testament, I take a story here in the Old Testament, amen, that his handmaid is from Israel. How in the world, I begin to think, did this woman get in Syria? She had no business being there. They hated, the Syrians hated God's people. Amen, but for a reason, she was there. She was there for a reason. Amen, and whether you know it or not, Joel, Amen. The prophet began to prophesy. Peter stood up in Acts 2. He began to say, In the last day, saith God, He said, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh, upon your sons and daughters. Old men was going to dream dreams, and upon my handmaid. You look up the word handmaid, it is a personal servant inside of the house. Can somebody say amen? This woman was a servant to a Syrian woman. Had no business being there. But if she wouldn't have been there, let me tell you something. This man could not have got help, ladies and gentlemen. You realize today, you own your job. Somebody's bailing. Hey, man, God got you there for a reason. I'm telling you, the church, hey, man, there's a struggle. And the devil has told so many lies. You want to know why? Because when the sinner walks in here, they say, now feel the judging eyes. You feel no judging eyes off of the blind. You feel judging eyes. Can't you see? Amen. Hallelujah. When can't you just see Mary Magdalene with seven devils? Amen. Walking inside Simon the Pharisee's house. Walking in Simon the Pharisee's house. Hey man, can't you just see him walking in there? Hey man, dressed like you know what, look like you know what. But guess who's there at that religious house? The Lord's there. She's not there for religion. She's not there for denomination. She's there. Amen. Hallelujah. She walks in that house. Amen. Can't you just see it? And she comes in there with a little alabaster box. Amen. And she come in there with a year worth of wages. Amen. She took that year worth of wages. Amen. Praise the Lord. And she broke it and began to pour it out on his feet. Now, I don't have this in Scripture. But I just got to know. Amen. I don't know if, amen, her past of a, if she had children. I don't know that. Amen. But I know she fell at the feet of Jesus. And she began to worship him. Come on. And Simon said if he was a true prophet. Amen. Now he was supposed to have been a part of the church. But he was really not part of the church. Because if he really was part of the church, he'd have been just like that little handmaid. I wish to God. Let me tell you something here today. The true church is saying, I wish to God. That person bound by alcohol will come to Jesus. I wish to God. That person bound by drugs will come to Jesus. I wish to Did you hear the true church? When it seen Naomi come back, he said, Naomi, is that you? It was exciting. Come on, somebody. Oh, come on here. Sister Judy, I can just see the picture painted when she's at the feet of Jesus wiping him. Can't you see? Come on. Hey, man, can't you see Simon? Hey, man, can't you see him? Hey, man, can't you see Simon getting his wives in? And say, baby, how'd she get in here? We're going to kill our prestige. They ain't going to let us back in the temple no more. They didn't hear about the town. You know what? No walk in. Woo! But she wasn't worried about that, Sister Judy. She wasn't worried about that damn bed. When she stepped in there and began to take and wipe it on his feet. Oh, can't you see my Lord? Turned his eyes and rolled his head back. He said, Simon, since I've been in your house, you ain't washed my feet yet. Oh, but do you not realize the 12 that he chose, one went back, so portrayed him another level fled. But it was Mary Magdalene that stepped in there. She was at the tomb the first one at the resurrection. She's the first one at the tomb. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. The true church. Uh, amen. It's like that little, not like that little woman. So he said, I wish to God he'd go down to Israel. Oh, I wish to God. I know if he go down to Israel, he'll get healed of leprosy. Because you know what leprosy done? Amen. According to the gospel, according to the Leviticus, it separated you from your family. It separated you from sin. Oh, that's why. Amen. When you get 
and save. Amen. There's a heart for God and a heart for humanity because you remember when you couldn't be a daddy. You remember when you couldn't be a mama. Oh, but I wish to God to go to Jesus. I know what it happened. Can't you see? I don't know where it happened at, but he obviously he went down to Israel, so she must have took her advice. Maybe she got the mistress here. Maybe she got his wife here. Oh, if he'll go down there, I know what will happen. But you know what? She never even lifted up man because he didn't went straight to Elijah. He just went to, to straight to the king of Israel. And when he came to the king of Israel, had all his silver, had all his gold. But about that time, hallelujah, hallelujah, he went down there. And the man walked up and said, hey, I'm, I'm naming. I'm naming. Now, you know this man is desperate. He steps down right now in the camp where nobody knows that he's not wanted. He's not wanted in Israel. Why? Because it was not time. It was not covenant. Come on, somebody. Let me tell you something. What faith to do? Faith to get God to move every time. Faith to get God to show up every time. Hey, remember that king read his garment? He said, hey, my God. But about that time, a little man by the name of Gehazi, that was an assistant of Israel. He was an assistant of Israel. Hey, of, uh, of Elijah. He said, Elijah, there's a man down there. There's a man down there. He's full of leprosy. He needs a miracle. Oh, he showed up with all his silver and all his gold. And about that time, church, uh, amen, Elijah didn't step out. He said, go tell him to dip in mud in Jordan seven times. He said, and he'll be healed. Naaman got upset. Naaman got mad. Oh, but it all started because of a little handmaid. Oh, let me tell you, some people say, oh, I thought about Sister Marlene when I woke up this morning and God put this word in me. Oh, she said, I worried Wayne Rivers to death. God, and Marlene never preached. Marlene never sung. Every time and time, she just testified. But Marlene, we were, she was a handmaid, you hear me? I said she was a handmaid. Hallelujah, Wayne never served God. Amen, lost his son in a car accident. His heart was in a life, was in a, it was just broken. Amen, hallelujah. But she was so persistent with God. She showed up every morning. She said, Wayne, would you come go to church with me? He said, Marlene, would you shut up? I ain't going to church. I'm not going, Marlene. If I know I know where the church is if I want to go. And you have to know Marlene. She said, well, I'm going to keep on obeying God. Amen, about that time. She kept on asking. She kept on asking. Hey, remember one morning, he said to shut you up. Molly, I'm going to church with you. Oh, but let me tell you, he stepped in all oh, because he thought he was just going to send his foul little woman. But the Holy Ghost sent inside the Lord that morning. And about that time, the Bible said one planet and one word. Oh, sometimes send a step in, the back trying to step in, and then
up in a spirit of steadfastness on my people. Go ahead.
I'm going to show you the heart that, the heart that God's gave me. So I can't get myself. What God put in me, the devil actually turned it around and used it against me. It used to do me so bad to see a sinner walk out. It does me bad now. Don't know what I'm saying. There's a thorn. But I used to beat myself down. Because I felt like I didn't do it if I didn't pray enough. I didn't see God enough. I didn't do this enough. I didn't do that enough. I didn't do that enough. I didn't do this enough. I didn't do this hard enough. I didn't pray enough. But I think God put that in me. Come on. But I couldn't let the devil bring such depression on me. Because what God's will for me to be depressed. But God put a fool in me. Oh God, could I did more? Could I did longer? I'm pretty sure many times I preach, maybe the presence of the Lord is lifted up off the altar call. And maybe he said, Brother Jay, you just hold this here. But I promise I'm, I'm doing it not just to do it. I'm doing it because I'm saying I wish to God. I wish to God. Every house service I ever do, I wish to God. Every time I put up a tent, I wish to God. That's what every time, every time, every time I go do a revival, it's I wish to God. I hope I'm praying, Lord, please. Give us revival. Give us a Holy Ghost hot point. Give us a move of the Holy Ghost. Because let me tell you something. When somebody gets saved, somebody can get delivered. I don't care if the truck breaks down. I don't care if the house burns up. Nothing else matters to me. Come on, somebody. I pray for good help from my family. Hey, man, I don't live in my home. But nothing else matters to me. Come on, somebody. Just like that booze that says, I got to get to the, I got to get to my booze. It's just like that drug dealer says, I got to get that pain. I got, I got to win that soul. That's what my life has become about. Amen is with his souls. He didn't call Peter to get rich. He said, I called you to fish for me. That's what I do. He didn't call, he didn't call me to get prestige. He didn't call me to, he didn't bless me with a tent. Amen is I got a big tent. Come on, son. He, he called us to fish. That's what it's all about. That's all about fishing. See, you don't realize. I'll never forget that day. You said, Brother, I will never forget that day. I'm right there alone with you. Till the night you came to that altar. Come on, somebody. There's a relief come off of me. It's like a release valve. There's a pressure valve. That's released off of me. Why well, praise the Lord? Because I know it's another soul that the devil lost. Because the devil knows he's got never a short time left. Hear that sinner? He knows he's got never a short time left. He's got a short time left. So he's trying to work. He's trying to steal souls. See, the devil, he got mad that you came to the altar. But what made him feel bad is when I come back to church. And the boy's gonna get a hold of something. And the boy's gonna get a hold of something. He's gonna be, he's gonna become a man of God. I gotta stop him. I gotta oppose him. I gotta come up against him. But he can't do nothing, son. He can't do nothing with the Holy Ghost Spirit. He can't do nothing. If you'll get in that secret place, you'll get in that closet. And say, God, here I am. Use me. I'll go to Africa. I'll go to Africa. I'll go to Australia. I'll go wherever you tell me to go to share this gospel. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Y'all know Brother Fernando and our family from Houston and California. Amen. They was getting ready to rent a tent. They said it's 30 degrees up here when you come inside the church. And I tell you something right now. Hallelujah. That's a hope. Can you hear me? I know they want to say all that's going on is California. It's lust and drugs and all this and that. But can I tell you, God hears the cry of California. God hears the cry. There's a cry out there that said we don't care about the weather. Oh, Brother Jerry, they want to shut us down because of this and that.
want that tent to come down. Come on. Come on. You said, I wish to God. I said, man, it's set up on that gospel. The gospel of Jesus. You know the preacher Herman Murphy. I didn't know it. You know, I'm blind. You should have just shook me and grabbed me to say, hey, go to church. I don't know if you did it or not. She turned Herman Murphy wide open and picked and choose the first hell message. I think like, yeah, that's real love. <laughs> it is. Uh, want to see the safe. Uh, you ever notice our service is different when that one comes back? Sometimes that two or three come back. I have seen ten and twelve come back. Sometimes he just won't go get the one, he'll go get the five. Yes, do it. Do it. Come on. Go get the hundred if you want to. Go get the million. Get the 99 and go get the million. Go get that lost line of Holy Ghost. Go get up under that bridge. Step in that drug house. Step in that dope house. Step in the casino. I've seen the God. You say, how do you know God can go in the club? cigarettes, same hell, amen, the one that don't do nothing, don't smoke, don't drink, do nothing, amen, but they're trying to make it in off of their rights, well, I don't do nothing, I'm just staying home, you got to be washed in the blood of Jesus, I don't care how much money you give to the poor, I don't care how much money you give to the church, I don't care, you can't buy your way into heaven, you can't go way into heaven, it's got to come to the righteousness of God, can somebody say amen, I wish I would give out some praise, let me tell you something, let me tell you, I've seen people with need a track, and more joy, amen, with people out there to get the Holy Ghost and people with five cars. Don't tell me right now. I said, I've seen people sell their body, amen, don't have nowhere to live, but come to church shout. And I've seen the people, amen, have a 2020 come to church. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. You know the women with the big ass, big got the big. 
we've had some churches you ain't seen. Can somebody say amen? Church look like somebody had look like a umbrella. Can somebody say amen? Dress the part, look the part, but still don't have God. I ain't trying to get you to get a dress. I ain't trying to get you to get long sleeves. I'm trying to get you to get the Holy Ghost. I wish to God you get the Holy Ghost. Don't, don't roll the die. 
baptized with Jesus. I wish to God. I wish to God. You know what happened when somebody dies and said, Man, I hope you got things right. Yeah. That's right. Come on. Come on. I wish to God they would have got saved that day. Yes. We'll be worried about Did it. Did oh, wish to God they would have made peace with God. Wish to God they would have got things right. Wish to God they would have made peace with God. How many times has anybody in their life said, I wish I wouldn't have done that? That's what's going on in hell. I wish I would have walked out that church. That's right. Just walk. 
But I, Jesus, you cannot talk this talk. Can somebody say amen? amen. On that seventh time, when he rose up, according to the scripture, his body was like a newborn baby. That's why you see people full of leprosy, full of sin. Let me tell you something, sister. Amen. That word is washing you. I looked up and had to take a double look. The word of God is washing you. And it's bringing a reality to a relationship with Christ that I can't do without you. You stand up, sister. You. God is washing you. God is cleansing you. And somebody say amen. The greatest thing a preacher ever is going to do is step on your toes. Because a preacher that will step on your toes, he ain't no preacher in the head anyway. But a preacher that steps on your toes, and then you know what that doctor's going to tell you? You sick, but there is a position. I can tell you, he is a physician. The same cup, the same word that cuts is the same word that heals. The same word that cuts is the same word that delivers. The same word that cuts is the same that word that breaks out. Sister, sister my caller said, the word brought me out. The word brought me out. The word. Now listen, did the word break out? And the word's going to keep you out. And the word's going to keep you out. I said, the word's going to keep you out. But it started with a hair maybe. Yes, yes. Oh, that's right. It started with that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. That's what I'm here for. Yes. That's what you here for. Yes. You tell somebody at your high school, you tell somebody at your I wish to God. You get the Holy Ghost. Huh? Listen, I, I know how it is. I'm going to go to church with you. I'm going to The pivot, it ain't in the pivot. Come on now. Come on. It ain't in the PA. Oh, it's in his presence. Yeah. Yeah. See if you lost in here. Or you're in a situation. I feel chip off. Let me tell you something. He can move on you. Let me be that anointing off of somebody else touching you. But it's a difference when he says, okay, I don't want to move on you. I want to move in you. When it's not that hard. Amen. What I mean is, is getting saved. There's going to be trials and tribulations. Yeah. But if you'll come to Jesus and make your election and your calling sure, let me tell you something. Jesus, he ain't going to take him all day to operate. What he's going to do, he's going to, he spoke to a legion of demons and said, go. Right. Come on. How long did that take? Can somebody just shout, go. go. <laughs> and the devil had to obey. He had to obey the word. And I'm telling you, when you call upon the name of Jesus and you get real with God and you say, God, I want everything you got to bring. I, I want money, Jordan. Because that's what John the Baptist was when he said, there's one more mighty than I. He was at Jordan saying, there's one mighty than I who will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and that would fire. You've heard the word of God. They may begin to walk away. Are you going to walk out of here? I pray you don't. I pray to God. Go ahead. You get the Holy Ghost. I pray. I pray to the Lord of above. You get the Holy Ghost. Amen. I pray, amen, when you get out of here, you tell somebody, I've been dipped. Jesus. I've been dipped in the Holy Ghost of Christ. Amen. And I've been changed. Old things have passed away. And behold, all things have come new. And then when they look at you a week from now, say, are you still holding on? Say, holding on. Yeah. <laughs> I hate when you say, amen. Oh, if, it, if, if, if this is what you got on Jesus, grab your boot off my own toy. Clap down on it. I'm talking about clap on it. Come on, somebody. Hey, Amen. I'm talking about grab him like you protect your Krispy Kreme donuts. You don't have nothing. Come on, somebody. Hey, Amen. You do it like a car. You do it like how you start counting. Because somebody say, man, hallelujah, fuck you, Jesus. You got to get a bite on this thing. You got to get a bite on this thing. You got to get a reaction. So what am I talking about? I'm not barely holding on. Uh-uh. First of all, he, man, I, he's holding on to me through my faith, through his power. And he's got all power. It ain't my power. It's his keeping power. Stand to your feet. Give Jesus another head hop. Somebody said, watch God work. 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 Come on, somebody said, watch God work. Watch God work. The word of God showed up to Abraham's tent. It began to work. He said, Shepherd's going to have a child. The word of God showed up to the tent. Watch God work. Watch God deliver. Watch God save. Watch God bring things to pass. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Stand to your feet. Let's give the Lord another hand. You don't know Jesus at this